I want to talk first about Iowa, the latest state with a six-week ban. By using six weeks, Republicans get to say it's not a total ban, while in reality banning nearly all abortions, right? That's right. That's right. And so it appears more illusory than real that there remains a right to be able to terminate a pregnancy in the state of Iowa. And Iowa had, for some time, been very restrictive with regard to abortion for women that were poor. The governor actually had to sign off on those abortions if there were abortions related to Medicaid coverage. And so this is consistent but still deeply alarming in that state. And there are groups in the state that are fighting back, saying that the abortion ban at six weeks violates Iowa's constitution. We'll see how those challenges carry forth, but it is deeply alarming because this also is not a Venn diagram of the American South, but in the heart of the Midland. Mm -hmm. Talk to me uh, about what that legal argument is th that you can use to challenge these kinds of bans. Well, you know, there are legal arguments that have a variety of those that have been used to fight back against abortion bans. That involving the Constitution has suggested that states' constitutions protect women, and because they protect women and count women as equal citizens, then banning abortion is something that violates the equal citizenship of women in those states. That has prevailed in some instances in some states. That's actually part of why the Kansas Supreme Court had actually upheld in a nearly unanimous decision in 2019, it was, that there was a constitutional right to abortion in the state because women were equal citizens and their equality demanded that they should be able to have access to abortion. Now, of course, the state challenged that and folks in that state fought back through referendum protecting abortion rights in that state. But those kinds of arguments can prevail, but much of this also depends upon the courts. We're back to the courts, state courts in this case, but federal courts as well. I want to talk with you, too, about this new over-the-counter birth control, the FDA approval of it. I'm going to share with you my understanding, and then you're going to tell me if that comports with your understanding and with your analysis, which is this is a mini pill. This is one type of pill that is on the market. The pill that we normally refer to as the pill is a combination pill. And so, as I understand it, there is still a broad swath, a large swath, of women who use oral contraceptives who will not be able to get that contraceptive over the counter. So as I understand it, a good first step, but so long as the combination pill is still held up by the FDA, the majority of women who use oral contraceptives won't be get, able to get them over the counter. Is that right? So it's a wise analysis that strikes to the heart of the question, which is that it's a long arc towards not only reproductive justice, but women's equality in this country. Uh, this is a medication that has been used for 50 years in over 100 countries. You can get uh, contraceptive access, such as a pill, over the counter. In the United States, it's been step by step the fight to be able to get equitable access to reproductive medicines. And this is a good first step. But to your point, the type of oral contraception that has been used by the majority of American women, this is not it. Although it's a safe product, has been on the market for 50 years and is being used all around the world.